Hi friends! Now, I didn't think I'd ever do a reaction video. I didn't think it was me. But today, a YouTuber who I respect quite a lot has released a video and I, I feel like it's fallen short of the mark. So I want to have a talk about it and see if it's accurate. Welcome back guys, now I just want to get straight into this video. The video is by Chicken Genius, and I'm a big, big fan of his. Big fan, really am. I think the stuff he talks about is really compelling, he really loves Tesla, I've learned loads about Tesla from him, even though I probably won't ever get to invest in Tesla. But he's released this video today about dividend investing, and I'm not sure it's accurate. I watched it once and I thought, oh, you've let yourself down there a bit mate. But I'll watch it again, and this will be the second time I've gone through it, and we'll just see if it's accurate. I think he might have just gone for a bit of a headline here and not really backed it up very well. Let's get started. Hi friends, imagine you save money all your life. You do the right thing. You work hard and you invest, and only to lose it all due to some like dumb ass donkey running the company. You trusted your life savings. You know, I don't butter my words. I figured, you know, I'd rather have some people hate me but in that process, I help more people. I would rather very much have it that way. Personally, I think investing is risky, of course. Okay, never gonna hate this guy. He's, he's good, he's got principles, well into cost averaging. He, he knows his shit, he really does. Or at least he appears to know his shit. He definitely doesn't mince his words either, he's, he's great. He talks about shit management there and he's completely right. You do not want a shit manager as part of your company. You should look into your managers, definitely. It's risky. Of course, there will be some that say, we invest in companies that can't be disrupted. Nothing will happen. Look, I share something that happened here in Singapore. High Flux. This company is as safe as it gets. High Flux desalinate water from the ocean to supply. Okay, so I see where he's going here. He's picked High Flux. It was a very solid company. Like the simplest business as far as a model goes, you basically desalinate water and then you give it to the public. Uh, how can you fuck that up? Yeah, he's, he's right, how, how do you fuck that up? You basically get a manager who just runs it into the ground, you get a poor CFO who manages the money wrong and that's how you end up there. That, that's it basically. No dividends, what can go wrong? Yeah, right, all you need is donkey management. Management is everything. You think like wire card thing, Luckin Coffee? Watch the news. This happens very often. So how do you as an investor invest safely? You need some weird Asian chicken calling himself genius coding you and that's how. <laughs> that's, that's funny. I wish I could do jokes like that. He has listed a few companies there though, uh, two of which I think paid dividends and I don't think Luckin Coffee paid dividends, did it? I, I don't think it did. That was a growth company, right? That was a disruptive Chinese coffee company. I th I'm pretty sure that was. I didn't know Looking Coffee very well because I think it started going bust before I started investing. So I, I knew the name, but I, I didn't know a lot about it. I'm teaching you to have independent thinking. That's my goal always. I'll show you a method many use. The safest of the safest method. You go through the list on dividend champions. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. This is a stupid way of doing dividend investing. Uh, I've got to admit. I haven't seen this website before, but I've seen websites like this. They're basically gonna list the top companies that pay dividends, and then you go from the top and you invest from the top down. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's what he's gonna say. The champions of the champions. I'll link this list below. You invest in the champions which you think you are the most comfortable with. All have amazing track record, but mostly are down. The stocks that have recovered or surpassed during this pandemic are mostly innovative, high growth companies. Absolutely no doubt. You cannot argue with them there that the top five companies out there right now are growth companies. Except for Microsoft and Visa and Apple. They're dividend companies as well. You got to remember that. They are growth companies like naturally, but they do pay dividends. So when I think about dividend investing, I don't just think about the dividend. I don't think about high yield. And I think that's a mistake a lot of people make is that you just look at the yield, you buy the yield, and then that's it, that company's safe. Not true, and I think in my previous videos, I've done that to death. 
As an investor, the total returns is the most important matrix and dividend investing is doing a pretty crap job so far in this pandemic. What's the point when you receive a lot of dividends and your capital drops? So yeah, he's right. You see that capital gain number and it drops, but you keep paying dividends. Yes, kind of. One of the stocks that pops out to me off the top of my head is AT&T. It's not gonna be one of the best examples right now. I, I know that. It's a terrible example, to be honest with you. But if you look at AT&T's five-year graph as it goes down, you look at the dividend yield that it got from it, instead of actually losing 12%, if you include dividends in their total return, you're actually going 15% capital. It's not the best company out there right now because it's made some bad decisions. Poor management, that's getting swapped. But if you take a stock like Realty Income, which has vastly outperformed the S&P 500 in total return since its IPO, and it's a very, very safe company because its business model is extremely simple. Buy buildings, rent them out. It doesn't need to be disruptive, but it is still innovative. The two can be separate. Fair enough, rare occasions, but they can be separate. So in this video, I'll be addressing the issue of is dividend investing risky or is there like a better method? I appreciate an early thumbs up. I'm always grateful for your support. You see, I come from the school of thought. I can answer that one right away. Yes, dividend investing is risky. It's riskier than putting your money into an ETF. It's risky if you do it in the wrong way. The same as growth investing is wrong if you do it in the wrong way. That's what's risky about growth investing. You hear a lot about the top five or 10 growth stocks that are out there, but you never hear about the ones that have failed because they just disappear and no one wants to talk about them. However, when a big giant falls, everyone wants to talk about it and everyone's going to know about it. That I'm never 100% right. There's always a degree that I'm wrong or the goal is to be less wrong the next day. You should take the approach that, that you're wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong. 100%, that's exactly what you need to do. But if we're going to really try and prove a point, then we need to be at least kind of right, yeah? That clip was from an interview back in 2014. My God, it has been like six years. This has helped me a lot in life, always listening to feedback and oh, be overall a nicer person. I highly recommend you to approach life with this mentality. It helped me cut losses when I made a wrong decision and helped me stay firm on decisions that seems like sketchy at first. Okay, that feels a bit like an oxymoron to me. Uh, I'll let it go because it, it's kind of profound, but learn not to do something when it's really risky, but at the same time, stick to your goals when it looks a bit risky. I, th I think that's what I got from that. Um, I'm sure it was profound. I, I, I don't think I understand it very well. Let's carry on. Receiving dividend income in theory is one of the best ways to invest. Imagine you receive a lifetime of dividends, but the real question is, how many companies last a lifetime? Quite a few, I think. Top of my head, Tesco, Tesco's, Tesco must be a lifetime, right? I'll have to Google that later. Um, loads of supermarkets. I mean, how long's Coke been going now? Um, Coke, so Warren Buffett was selling Coke when he was six, still going now and he owns it and he's like 90 something, so Coke. Um, quite a few, quite, quite a few companies last a lifetime. And let me guess, he's really invested in Tesla, so I'm guessing he expects that to last a lifetime. Now, I totally agree. Tesla is gonna be amazing. I've, I've gotta make put that out there. You cannot disagree with anybody that Tesco, uh, Tesco, you cannot disagree with anyone that Tesla is going to be absolutely amazing. It's it's the company of the future, definitely. I'm not ready to get in yet. I, I don't understand it. It's not a business that's simple enough for me to understand. So uh, my simple brain won't take it. I can't, I, I can't get in, simple as that. They're really, really good, I, I totally get it. I've just not got that money to risk and I don't have as big of balls as he does. I, I really don't. What can I say? This is very important question and I want you to continuously ask yourself this question after this video because it's gonna make you a better investor. I remember all the dividend investing books I read, all the courses I attended. They teach you to look at like payout ratio, cash flow from operations, and many other factors like debt, and going in debt about the different kinds of debt. It's crazy, man. I followed everything I was taught 
to see the stock price dropping and dropping and dropping, having no clue what went yeah, wrong. Yeah, this is a big problem at the moment, isn't it? There's lots of companies out there that are dropping because they're not popular or they're not as popular as the FANG or the, um, the Tesla stock. Whether it's less risky or not, I, I don't know. 10 years has proved uh, that five stocks have done exceptionally well and they are not risky. That's great. How often do you pick the top five stocks in the world? How often do you pick the top five stocks in the world from 10 years before? How often does that happen? He's definitely done it, which is great. But how, how many are gonna fail? How many growth stocks on the way, like Looking Coffee, how many of them fail? Loads of them, absolutely loads of them. And I know he's really big on innovation. Innovation is really important. He's picked Tesla, it's really innovative, it's disruptive, everything like that. And he's got a good nose for it as well, I think. Look, don't get me wrong that dividend investing is horrible. There are stocks like Apple or McDonald's. There are, are great dividend companies. But look, let's be practical here. People who invest in dividends want cash flow, consistent money, something that they can use off retirement. A 1% to 3% dividend here ain't cutting it. Uh, yeah, I think 1% to 3% dividend is fine because you're expecting your company to grow as well. I think he's just focused on companies that just have a dividend and he's completely forgotten that you know you pick stocks that also have some growth as well so when you combine their total return you do end up getting like an, an actual return fair enough it's not going to be a tesla 300 percent in a month uh, or whatever it was but you would have had to pick tesla and amazon and apple right you, you would have had to do that you would have had to look at that and gone that's not too pricey for me. But in the same way, I didn't pick any of those companies because I got just as unlucky as someone else did lucky. There's a lot of luck in the stock market and a lot of your returns will be from you dollar cost averaging into those big companies. I know he agrees with that and I know he knows that's the way you do it. But yes, he's got some companies which are really, really good. Uh, I think he's on Square and uh, he's doing that because Jack Dorsey likes Elon Musk. But Jack Dorsey's last company, Twitter, that's not done very well. I know Twitter's really popular and everything, but look at Twitter's stock, it's it's flat. It's been flat since IPO. So these great managers don't always make these companies that get great market share. I do love the scissors though. I, I know I'm making a joke, but um, I do love the scissors is, you know, I think he's trying, I think he's saying he's trying to be frugal by not buying a light sand, but he, he lives in Singapore, man. Like, if you're trying to be that frugal, get out of Singapore. Jeez, that's an expensive place. Really expensive place. How about the taxes? We also have like 5 to 7% high dividend players. These high dividend players usually have some sort of like property play. And guess where will that end up now? Those that invested in high dividend companies, I know the pain you are feeling now, especially during this pandemic. Yeah, he's not wrong. It's um, high dividend companies. Uh, actually, no, he's wrong. No, he is wrong. Um, high dividend paying companies are doing very well. There's a couple of high dividend companies that aren't doing very well, but really it's any stock that's not in FANG right now is doing pretty terrible because pretty much everything is flat. And there's a lot of those SPAC stocks and stuff that are doing pretty terrible at the moment. They've all kind of lost. I think even, uh, I haven't looked at Lemon. Let's have a quick look at Lemonade. Hold on. Yeah, so, so Lemonade has dropped, uh, so Lemonade has dropped 15% straight away off IPO. Um, it's going to do that. That's what happens after IPOs, it's, it's fine. And that's 15% down after the crash. You know, um, Lemonade has a long while to go. It's got about 10 years before it actually pays off. I, I totally get that. But like to say that only dividend companies are in the ground right now is, that's totally inaccurate, isn't it really? It's, it's really inaccurate. Just because you've picked Tesla, it doesn't mean every other company is crap. It just means that Tesla's doing very well right now. And it should be, I don't disagree with that. It, it really should be, it really should. So how, looking at your options, you're kind of screwed. This pandemic has taught us to really think hard what is necessary and what's like non-essential. Flu-19 has made it pretty clear what's on the path forward. If you have invested in crap, it's going to show up. We all know fossil fuels are not sustainable, we know that using physical cash is dumb and hell, even like doctors are being disrupted. Yep, fossil fuels are on the way out. There's no doubt about that. I'm in shell because I feel like it's going to head towards renewables. 
I would have thought that he'd agree that Van Buren is a good manager for that. Um, but he might disagree. Uh, I don't know. It's probably out in the air, to be honest. And he's right. Non-essential is shit. And essential is very important. But guys, look at Hormel Foods, look at Costco, look at ASML, look at Lowe's. Jesus Christ. They're not necessarily essential stocks. They're stay-at-home stocks. Netflix isn't fucking essential. So why is that doing very well? I think his point there is a little bit unfounded because I've just come up with that off the top of my head. And if I can do that, then his point isn't very good. Hey, take a look at this article. I'll link it below. Instead of dividend investing, is there a better way? Personally, I'm moving in this direction because most companies are not going to last forever. Most companies aren't going to last forever. True. Absolutely true. Tesla's not going to be the only company that lasts forever, guys. There's dividend investment companies out there that will last forever. There's some that definitely have lasted forever so far. I've named a couple already. If innovation stops, disruption is like imminent. This method is also gaining popularity. In finance, there is this method called the 4% rule, also known as Trinity Study. I'll link the Wikipedia page below if you want to read up after the video. I'm really surprised he's gone for the 4% rule here. I thought he was going to be a bit more interesting than that. The 4% rule is really, really popular. And not really any, and not really anything new. I thought he'd be, I thought he'd have come up with something different to the 4% rule. The 4% rule is basically the same as dividend investing as far as you just skim off the top until you're dead. That's, that's kind of how it goes. Is Tesla going to grow 20% year on year until he's dead? Shit. He really likes Tesla. Stay with me first so you'll understand better. The 4% rule is simple. Withdraw 4% from your investments yearly. Instead of like investing in dividend stocks, you buy high growth innovative companies and you sell 4% using it as dividend. Using it as a dividend. Just use dividends. So let's say for example, you buy Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, Amazon, these like no brainer, high growth stocks. Yes, they're high growth stocks, but two of those are also dividend payers. Very important to learn that. Dividend investing isn't just about high yield. He's kind of picking on a really shit type of dividend investor here who just picks like imperial brands because the fucking dividend is like 18% or whatever. You've got to look at the companies as well. You've got to look at Microsoft and go, ah, it's disrupting the home network. It's doing really well. That's right, it's innovative, it's scaling, it's got everything he needs. Pays a dividend though. Pays a good dividend. Apple's a little bit different. I was in Apple, then I'm not in Apple. Just because I don't like the products, shouldn't really have a problem with that, but it, I've sort of been too emotional about that one. I, I don't like Apple, so I didn't buy it. And I saw the phones and the slowdown thing, and I was like, nah, do I want to be in this company that's just going to keep on doing that? It's going to lock you into this horrible ecosystem where you can only use its stuff. It doesn't bode well for me as far as like freedom goes and, and things like that. So Apple's not really a stop for me, but fucking hell, that recent earnings port was absolutely amazing, right? It, you can't doubt it at all. You can't doubt it. And now they're going to stock split to get everyone to buy. Fuck, I'll probably even buy some more. Who knows? I, I don't know yet. You have a million dollars in investing in these companies. Yearly, you sell $40,000 worth of shares. The remaining $960,000 worth of shares, you leave it and let it grow. That's it. So you do note, there will be years that you'll be getting growth of 20% and some years 1% or worse, negative. But it really doesn't matter because we know over the long term, where these stocks will be going. But we don't know for sure, right? That's the whole point of risk. I mean, he knows that Tesla is going to go on forever. And, you know, he really believes that and that's great. But why won't other companies do that? You know, is, is it the only company in the world? Uh, I, I, is he just talking about Tesla here? Is he just talking about Tesla? Is that is, is this like buy Tesla, buy Tesla, buy Tesla? And are we running up like a massive pump and dump scheme here? I, it's such a shame. I don't want to talk shit about this guy because he's so fucking smart. He, well, at least he comes off as really smart on here. But there's more companies, right? There's there's more to the world. There's there's going to be other stuff. And why not be happy that everyone's going to drink Coke all the time in the same way everyone's always going to drive a Tesla? And is there going to be a day where battery cars are pretty shit? You know, where they're bad for the environment. Is there going to be a day when that happens? What's the next stock after that? What What is it? 
Do we find out that in five years we're running out of nickel and Tesla is absolutely destroying the environment so we have to find something new? We don't know that. He believes fully that he does and that's okay but he makes the argument that with other companies he doesn't. And you can't have it both ways. I know I'm using Coke as an example but it's just off the top of my head. I'm sure there's something else out there that we can't live without that pays a dividend. ASML? ASML's pretty good. Probably overvalued at the moment but... We can't live without it. It pays a very small dividend. It's got a lot of growth. Um, it's got a big moat. It's got everything on the Buffett watch list, but we're not talking about that, are we? It's extremely disruptive as well. It is the disruption. I don't know really, we're saying that Tesla isn't risky because it's being innovative, but Coke is risky because we know what's gonna happen with it. Eh. <sighs> this method of investing because I'm an entrepreneur. I ran multiple companies and advisor of a few other companies. I see companies grow and fall. It takes a lot of effort to build a business and keep it going. For a company to fall is as easy as a snap of a finger. Yeah, it is. So is Tesla immune to that? Is Tesla completely immune to that? Is, is, Square, is Square completely immune to that? That's more important. Is Square, immu is Square immune to that? Is it really going to disrupt Visa as much as it thinks it is? I hope so, but it's, it's not gonna dominate the world, is it? Innovative companies who have proven that they can scale are far less risky. The danger mostly starts when innovation slows. So by applying my business background to investing instead of reading investing books written by people who have never done business is something that sets the part the way I invest. What books is he talking about? Most of the investing books I've read are people that are investors that run businesses. Warren Buffett's an investor who runs a business. He runs a business very, very well. Do I not listen to him? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know. I hope you as an investor apply this method and when you invest, you need to think like a business person. After all, when we talk about first principles, a stock is a company and a company is a business and a business is run by people. Okay, so look at businesses. Look at, look at businesses, understand businesses. If you see that they're innovative, go for them. That's what I like to think I'm doing, at least within my risk tolerance and, and all that sort of thing. Not my first time saying this, but reading business books instead of investing books. Yeah, read business books rather than invest in books. Y yeah, I guess so. Yeah, makes makes sense. Make, I, I, that doesn't not make sense. I think the argument now is that every investor that proceeded before Tesla is wrong. Like, the old way of investing is over, is dead. I think that's the general consensus now because 10 out of the 100 years that the stock market's been going, that's how it's gone. There's a couple of other people that very much argue with that, but to say that dividend investing in itself is not the way is uh, a bit inaccurate, I think, because I think dividend investing has evolved as well. It's not like the old style of dividend investing that you would pick up in a book. It does take a lot of Chicken Genius's principles because we still need to look for innovation, we still need to look for a bit of disruption, but it doesn't mean that dividend paying companies do not disrupt anymore. We have got plenty of examples of that and Apple and Microsoft are two examples of that. The reason why you'd look to them because they have a dividend is because it shows they're being smart with their money. Share buybacks and things are really sketchy. They're really quiet and not a lot of people actually know about them when you talk to them. And a lot of the time share buybacks are just to fill CFO pockets. For some reason this capital growth number is so important to everybody, but it's not. It's the amount of money that's in your pocket. Concluding this video is dividend investing dead. It is not dead, but definitely more risky than investing in innovative companies. Dividend investing is more risky than investing in innovative companies. I need a second to process this one because it feels really dumb. Dividend investing as the strategy is more risky than the concept of an innovation in a company. I don't think they're the same thing. Who says what's innovative? Innovation's a concept, right? In innovation is a, innovation's like subjective. People would have considered looking coffee to be innovative. They were disrupting the coffee market. That's what they were doing. Fair enough, it's not as disruptive as what Tesla is, I guess, but like 
people took a risk and it failed. That's what growth investing is. That's, that's how it is. For every really good company that you get, there's gonna be five that are really shit and you'll lose money on. That's how the average investor loses money. That's a video coming up later. I'm not, I'm not convinced that's a good point. Innovation is important. Scalability is extremely important. But dividend paying companies can be innovative. Apple and Microsoft have proved it. If you're saying high yield, then yeah, I, I guess a lot of horrible high yielding companies are pretty shit. Again, these are just off the top of the head. I'm rambling a little bit, but, but I'm thinking up these examples straight away and it's very easy to knock down these arguments, in my opinion. You are not going to disrupt yourself. Somebody is going to come along and disrupt you. Right, so he's saying that with old companies, they get new management that just tick along and tick along and they don't innovate and then eventually that they die. Very, very good point. Very important. Management is very important. They need to be very keen and they need to be very smart. AT&T is a very good example of that as a high dividend yielding company that has had terrible management. It's currently changed its management and hopefully the store is gonna change after that. That's the hope anyway. But on the other hand, Elon's a fucking time bomb and he's gonna die. You know, he, well, actually, maybe you won't die. Maybe you'll just become some robot Elon like in the future and he'll take over all of the CEOs. He'll be like super CEO or something. I, I don't know. Maybe Elon won't die, but Elon might die. What if Elon's autopilot fucks up tomorrow and he ends up in a car crash? Sorry, I don't want to think about that, but what happens if that happens? Have they got backup management? I've never heard of the backup CEO, so I don't know. Look, I don't want to attack Tesla because Tesla's an amazing company. It really is. But when people say that Warren Buffett's going to die, so Berkshire Hathaway will lose all of its share price. But in the same way, if Elon has an accident or he decides to go and tweet something that is really stupid, then Tesla is going to have a real big problem. Tesla is Elon Musk, right? Even he admits that. Appreciate your time watching. I hope I brought great value. I take a long time to like sit in your shoes and think like if I had an investing mentor, how would I want my mentor to guide me? I hope you find these videos useful. I always listen to feedback. So cheers. Thanks for the like earlier. And as always, invest safe. Okay, I'll try and bring this to as quick an end as possible. He highlighted one company that failed and has that as really his only evidence in this video. He then says that management is very important, which is also very important in dividend investing. And then he goes on to say that innovative companies don't pay a dividend, but he lists two companies that do pay a dividend. God, I really like this guy. He's really, really good. He's really smart. He knows everything about Tesla, but he really hasn't considered the whole picture here. He hasn't considered everything around dividend investing. He's just basically said high yield is shit, which to be honest is quite true. And he has a lot to back it up. Tesla is an amazing company loads of money in it. It seems that there's no ceiling at the moment and he's picked right. He's picked very well. And I also wouldn't say he's lucky because he's made the videos on Tesla. But we haven't managed to build a strategy here of what innovation is. We just know that dividend investing isn't innovation. But I've been able to prove to you off the top of my head that there are innovative dividend paying companies. You've just got to find them in the same way that you've got to go out and find the growth companies as well. Dividend investing is less risky than growth investing simply because there's a shit ton more dividend investing companies than the top five fan stocks. Just because some high yielding companies go bankrupt, it doesn't mean that growth stocks always go up. That was what the whole video was based around. There was no real evidence other than one company that went bust. I bet I could find a Google search and find 10 companies that said they were really innovative that just went bust over the past couple of years. Anyway, I've got to say, I have loads of respect for Chicken Genius. He's fucking amazing. He's so engaging. He's got so much knowledge, it's ridiculous. However, just in this video, because it's dividend investing, I've got to defend it a little bit because his argument was really quite baseless. I reckon if he tried though, he could find some really good evidence. I'm gonna go look for it myself, I think. Thanks very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and invest.